At this point, I feel that, you know, I have to pay attention to your future employment. And uh, I have to be honest, you know, I've taught you a way that matrices show up in solving ordinary and partial differential equations. And that's a part of our jobs uh, in many subjects, uh, you know, there are at least 10 departments on the Georgia Tech campus that use differential equations. To be honest, at this point, I have to tell you there are two ways to think about uh, matrices. Uh, the way we have shown you comes directly from Newton and Leibniz through, you know, lots of improvements over the centuries, which is, you know, there are laws of nature and we solve them and uh, they're conveniently written as differential equations, but their solutions are finite time or infinite time solutions. So they're not differential equations. There's lots of work that connects the two. You know, next week I will discuss uh, a typical thing that you have to do when you're solving differential equations. So that's, you know, perfectly honest job. Lots of scientists do that. Now, other scientists also in how we're building generate humongous data sets. You know, they uh, look at a colony of ants running around and they have a huge video and they're trying to figure out the patterns in what's happening in this, you know, biomechanical system uh, which has social components. So I have to teach you also how do you, you do that and that's what I'll do on Thursday that's called singular value decomposition and it's source of great confusion for many physicists and everybody else because uh, while in Newtonian world, we compare phase space to phase space. We compare two states in phase space. In large uh, data analysis, deep thinking, da, da da da, we compare bricks to oranges because, you know, our measurements are in time. We are looking at, uh, or for example, we have 10,000 face pictures. And on the vertical axis, we're trying to organize them by are they squinting, do they have noses, you know, by the features or the faces. So the typical data matrix is a brick in one and orange in the other direction. And what do you do? So that's what I plan to do next. Just a preview and I will. Ignore this I, but you know, just just to remind you kind of things, you know, and I put H bar equal to one, doesn't matter because it works for classical. So uh, this is called quantum evolution operator. If you take quantum mechanics courses, if you take chaos or ergodic theory courses, this has other names. So it's called Koopman. So what's going on is that, you know, Hamiltonian encodes a law, a nonlinear law like Newton's law, but, uh, we associate it with possible states in a world, you know, state quantum states and they evolve according to this operator. Now, if you have uh, systems which are classical, then what you can do is you can say, I live in this state and I have a probability of being someplace. So there's a probability function. And then that probability function in time, the particles rearrange themselves, they have a probability of being something. That probability in time, you know, changes the distribution of particles. So if this is a probability of finding a particle at X, and this is X1, X2, and you know, X, 10 to the six or whatever, 
if you're doing statistical mechanics, ergodic theory, lots of degrees of freedom, then this operator sometime later, time t, has redistributed particles and they appear with different probabilities. It turns out both classical and quantum mechanics and stock markets and stochastic processes, they can all be written in this way. <coughs> so that's one way of dealing with matrices. <coughs> now, you know, bad news. Uh, in general, so let's call this matrix M. Whenever we put it on computer, we put finite number of degrees of freedom, so it's not a function anymore. Bad news is that in general, M cannot be diagonal. So lots of nature is described this way, but it's subtle, difficult, and something. Here comes, you know, applied math or data science. And there is a totally elementary result that says that any matrix X in this matrix looks like that. Uh, face faces. So it doesn't even have time. Now in our laboratory in in town, this is typically in fluid dynamics, for example, this is a time axis. Time. And then our experimentalists take a snapshot. So this is This is a feature space. For example, if they take a, a, you know, three-dimensional picture of state of fluid, you can stack it up by uh, stacking up all the pixels of the picture and uh, adding values. So you can always turn it into a vector. So that's what the data science X is. It's something that has bricks this way, oranges this way. And now there is an amazing simple result, which I will not prove, but uh, I will use, that says I can rotate. So there are n faces and m features. n is very large, m is small. And this x, uh, you know, I've drawn it this way. This is x transpose in data science. This thing is very thin and very tall. So what you can do is in my feature space or in my neuronal measurements on a brain or in a picture space, I can rotate these guys. So this is a rotation. And this is an uh, M small matrix, M, you know, thousand or hundred or something. For neurons, hundred for faces, you know, a megaloid or something, but small compared to this. Then, uh, in a correct coordinates, this data matrix is actually diagonal. So it has sigma has a form sigma one, sigma two, zero, zero. And because this is of size M and this is very rested just zeros, per sigma I is larger or equal to sigma i plus one. So that's this thing. And then there's another matrix U where I rotate back. So this is 
transpose in this notation. So this is a huge matrix, n by n. This one is rectangular. Uh, n, m, like that. And now the data science says, you give me any data, and on Thursday, I'll tell you what happens then. <laughs> okay, You're yes. going to leave us without an answer? <laughs> it's a television series, right? I mean, <laughs> and then, Will she get pregnant or not? We will know. People stay away from campus, don't congregate. You live in a third world, nobody will protect you unless you protect yourself. Listen only to science in dealing with pandemic. I, I, you know, what can I do? We are stuck in this situation. So please, you know, do form groups, but either socially distance or, uh, or online. Do spit once or twice a week. Uh, because you help everybody by keeping track of this. That's all. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.